Hey, this is Tom Nash, and the separatist region in Moldova, called Transnistria, is now appealing, pleading to Putin and Russia to come rescue them from the evil Moldovans who are pressing them. This checkpoint leads to Transnistria, the pro-Russian Moldovan region. Now its authorities are asking Russia and the United Nations for economic protection. They accuse Moldova of economic pressure after the introduction of a new customs tax. After the invasion of Ukraine, some fear for the future of their region. Sounds familiar? Well, that's exactly what happened in Ukraine, in the separatist regions of Lugansk and Donetsk, where the Russian separatists have made a similar appeal to Putin. And now we see exactly how this is playing out. Now, this is a very interesting story. This pro-Russian uh, separatist region that is not recognized by the UN. The UN sees this as part of Moldova is now appealing to Putin to come and bail them out from the oppression by the Moldovan government. Now, uh, Transnistria is a very interesting uh, kind of region because it already has a lot of Russian influence in it, and it's not a new thing. This was the scene of a bloody battle, part of the civil war that left Moldova divided. As the Soviet Union was collapsing, the tiny Eastern European nation declared independence. Soon after, the Russian-speaking region of Transnistria said it was breaking away from the rest of the country. The separatists claimed they feared Moldova would rejoin Romania. Paramilitary forces took over public buildings, aided by Cossack fighters and Russian troops. They fought the Moldovans in a series of battles. Hundreds died. Basically, when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, Transnistria actually broke away from Moldova and was eventually bailed out by the Russians. When the Moldovans tried to take it by force, the Russians sent troops over there and basically it's been a standoff ever since. And to this day, Russia has a few thousand soldiers stationed in Transnistria and they have a very, very deep relationship with that region, supplying them free gas and essentially propping up their economy. Now, if you've ever seen uh, the documentaries about Transnistria on YouTube, you saw that this is a time capsule, essentially. This is a you know, a Soviet Union time capsule. The flag is Soviet, all the installations are Soviet, everything, it looks like you've gone to 1980s USSR, pretty much. Now, they have half a million people living there, mostly dual nationals, Moldovans and Ukrainians, Ukrainians and Romanians, Moldovans and Russians. It's a whole mixture. About half of them, 250,000, are pure Russians. Russian-speaking, Russian citizens who just live there. Border to a breakaway state. Welcome to Transnistria, a land that still lives under the hammer and sickle. Stalin tut. Where folk at this flea market still hanker after the glory days of the Cold War. Of course it was good with the Soviet Union. We wanted to be with Russia and still want to be with Russia. It's a land where Lenin rises like a guardian angel. And now this region that hasn't really convened their parliament since 2006, all of a sudden done so and appealed to Russia to help it because Moldova is putting an economic siege to essentially uh, wage an economic warfare against Transnistria, blocking uh, crucial imports and uh, essentially turning this Transnistria region into a ghetto, as the claim may be. Now, it's a very similar MO mode of operations to what we saw in Ukraine when the local Russian separatists in Lugansk and Donetsk appealed to Putin, then he had to come and help them, etc, etc, etc. Now look, I know you guys don't follow Moldovan politics, <laughs> but this is not the first escalation sign we've seen recently. In March of 2023, there was an assassination attempt on the leader of uh, Transnistria, and the Transnistrians, they blamed the Moldovans who said, no, we didn't do anything like that. And, you know, it's a very, very touchy topic. It's a, it's a very hot potato. Now, uh, the thing about this whole story is that Moldova does not want to join NATO, but Moldova does want to join the EU, and it's in the process to do so. Now, it's going to be a pure Russian decision whether to actually wage war and take Transnistria by force like they did with eastern Ukraine. If Putin decides he wants to go in there by force and wreak havoc, it's going to be his decision. And, you know, whatever it looks like in the mainstream media, it's just a show. It's just a smokescreen. Now, in case this becomes a military conflict, uh, even for Russia, it's going to be quite complicated logistically. It's going to be a nightmare. But, I mean, Putin has done crazier things. He might. This may also be a ploy to prevent Moldova from joining the European Union. Because in order for them to join the EU, 
they need to show stability and if they have a dispute, especially a territorial dispute with Russia that may lead to escalation, they might not join the EU. And at that point, Putin wins because he doesn't want more EU countries essentially on his border. And that might be the whole thing right here. And since neither you nor I own a DeLorean that can travel back to the future or to the past and find out, we won't know until this whole thing plays itself out. But stay tuned. Get us some popcorn. It's going to be interesting.